To say that technology is moving fast right now would be a huge understatement. Electric cars, artificial intelligence, robotics, brilliant minds are pushing humanity in directions that would have seemed impossible just a decade ago. One of the most exciting and controversial technologies is brain implants, also known as neural implants. In this video, we'll discuss this incredible technology, where it is, where it's going, and why you should be enthusiastic instead of worried. Hello, my name is Luke Monington and welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any content in the future. Now let's get back to the concept of brain implants. This umbrella term refers to any technology that involves inserting electric devices into the brain. The goal of doing this can vary widely, but it generally has to do with enhancing or in some way augmenting the brain's function. Several organizations are currently pursuing this technology, the most notable being Elon Musk's Neuralink and BlackRock's Neurotech. However, each group has its own vision of what these devices could and should be capable of doing. For instance, should the implant be powered by AI or simply react to direct user stimuli? Will it interact directly with brain cells? And if so, how will it accomplish this? Will the device connect to external devices and networks? And if so, for what purpose? These are just a few of the variables at work, and there are new ones popping up every day. This goes to show you how rapidly this sector is moving and how many directions it might go. Now, it's important to mention that AI brain implant technology is still in the experimental and testing phases. And while any final product will still have to bypass miles of red tape, there have been some promising trials involving the use of this product for medical purposes. So, who are the major players in this sector? As one might expect, billionaire and tech aficionado Elon Musk has been a driving force behind neural implants since the beginning. Never one to shy away from tossing his money at a challenge, Musk co-founded Neuralink Neurotechnology back in 2016. The goal is to develop a high bandwidth brain machine interface, or BMI. With this device, humans will be able to communicate directly with computers and other devices using only their thoughts. Of course, the implications implications of this are far-reaching. Armed with Neuralink BMI, a person could enhance their own cognitive or physical abilities. A disabled person might be able to control their own wheelchair or other mobility device using only their thoughts. Construction workers might be able to control robots or other machines from a safe distance. And of course, virtual reality could become infinitely more immersive, which will affect everything from gaming to medicine and beyond. In the long term, Musk and his Neuralink team hope to facilitate a merger of AI and humans. However, the company is still in its early stages, having conducted demonstrations on animals, but not humans. The same can't be said for the other major force in the space, BlackRock Neurotech. This Utah-based technology firm is not only ahead of Musk's team, but has taken a completely different approach to using AI neural implants. Specifically, they're approaching this technology from a medical side. So, while Neuralink has taken the stance of, wouldn't it be cool if it could do X, Y, and Z, BlackRock wants to use this technology to treat neurological disorders like epilepsy and Parkinson's disease. They also hope to help disabled people control robotic limbs and other devices using only their thoughts. As one might expect, BlackRock's positioning of neural implants as a medical technology has forced the FDA and other government organizations to take their brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, much more seriously. It's also worth noting that the company's wireless neural interface, known as the Utah Array, is currently the most advanced system in existence. Either way, the company is currently performing human trials, while Neuralink has yet to receive permission. As of this posting, most of these trials have focused on people with paralysis interacting with robotic arms, computers, or other devices. So far, the results have been promising and the company seems determined to do everything it can to stay at the front of the pack. When you're talking about a chip or interface system that's going to allow us to talk to computers, control robotics, and move paralyzed limbs, it's understandable that much of the thinking trends towards the grandiose. However, despite being behind in the race, it's possible that Musk and Neuralink are looking at this correctly. Sure, the work-related and medical implications of AI brain implants are huge, but they will affect everything else we do. Imagine a day in the life of someone who can interface with everything using only their brain. They wake up and turn on the coffee pot with their implant while they make their bed. While they're in the shower, they turn their car on so it has a chance to warm up. On the way to work, they could listen to three TED Talks at high speed because they're able to process and retain the information much faster. And those are just a few examples. Many in the AI space predict that we won't have to text, call, or even speak in many cases because we could communicate directly through our link. We could receive constant updates on our health, including blood pressure, blood sugar, and any infections or diseases we may be fighting off. We could personalize virtually everything in our lives in seconds, enhancing how we eat, exercise, and entertain ourselves 
in more ways than we could possibly imagine. Consider for a brief moment what gaming might be like. We're already seeing huge jumps in virtual reality adoption within the gaming industry. Though this got off to a rocky start back in the 90s with Nintendo's famed Virtual Boy, the latest games are proving that this new generation is ready for the fully immersive experience. Now imagine how much more immersive it would be if the game could connect to an AI neural chip. The game itself could better mimic how humans process information while providing a more responsive and engaging stimulus. Players could get the full sensation of running and jumping while sitting comfortably on their couch. The game could simulate interaction with physical objects and environments, allowing players to feel the sensation of swinging a heavy sword, getting dropped into a pool, or jumping over a chasm. In summary, there are a million what-ifs associated with neural implants. Unfortunately, most of the ones we hear about are negative. But while it's important to make sure that these implants are safe and used in an ethical manner, there's nothing wrong with allowing ourselves to dream about what life with these amazing devices could be like. After all, few technologies are more in a position to improve the lives of humans than AI implants. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe for more informative content. I'll see you in the next one.